Welcome back to the channel. This is Simon Cromer and today we're doing a master class type of video on this 37 axle par center console. We're doing a full restoration. We are going to be wet sanding, buffing, polishing, bright work, plastics, vinyl, and a polymer sealant application. It's all coming to you in this video today. Now typically I would charge for this amount of depth and information. This is going to be quite a long sort of video but guys if you stay tuned you are going to take away so much from this video and all the educational information so if you're looking to restore your boat as a boat owner or a boat detailer this is definitely that video for you now because i'm not going to charge for this video go ahead and give me a subscribe go ahead and like the video before we even get started and always be sure to check out one percent detail.com our new and recently released website for the best auto and marine detailing supplies all in one location so all those links will be in the description below so stay tuned keep watching the video and check out the products as we go through the video so guys you're going to want to take notes today you're going to really want to tune in full attention and focus give yourself an hour an hour and a half to kind of sit down and take all this in um, this is the type of video that you do want to take notes on and really keep in the back of your mind so definitely this isn't just a drive in the car type of video make sure you sit down watch it and absorb everything you need to restore your boat or your client's boat. So with that said guys, let's really get started with the video. As we get started with the sanding process, keep in mind that we did give the boat a really good wash before we got started. So make sure you give your boat a strip wash prior to sanding because you do not want to sand dirt particles back into the gel coat. You're trying to remove oxidation and doing that strip wash will remove that top layer of oxidation for you to really see what you're working with on the boat. So use Dawn dish soap, you've got degreaser you can use, stark mold and mildew clean for any of your mold and mildew on your vinyl um, or anything like that on the boat. Get out your pressure washer, clean all your surfaces, open up those pores, use uh, stark venom or rust aid for any of your rust marks on your boat and you're gonna be all set. So really wash down your boat, strip it down and then you're gonna be ready for the sanding process. Let's go ahead and jump back to a previous section in the video. So when we first started the video at the end of the intro, when the music was playing, I had a part or a scene where I actually took out the gloss meter and did three readings on the gel coat. And we got a five, a 6.3, both of those on the hull, and we got a 2.6 on the top side. Now we're gonna explain exactly what all these numbers mean and where you need to start in the restoration process. Now we gotta keep in mind that, you know, Buffing with Stark Level R, in my experience, increases the gloss meter 40 points on the gloss meter scale. So a gloss reader is going to read from zero to 100 with zero meaning zero gloss at all and 100 meaning a perfect or a really, really glossy surface, which is pretty much unrealistic or not practical. Um, but you know, if you get into that 90, really if you're getting into the 90s, you're doing a very good job in the detail process. That's gonna give you a good enough surface to coat with, whether that's a ceramic coating or a polymer sealant. Now, like I said, Stark Level R is gonna increase us 40 points. So if we get an initial reading on the gel coat that's 40, we can start with the buffing process. So as long as we're getting a 40 or above, we can start with the buffing process. So for example, we go from a 40, we buff with Stark Level R. Okay, that takes us up to an 80. Now we can consider a one or a two-step polish to finish off the detail. Now, sometimes these polishes elevate in Zerna 400. These are gonna increase that reading another five to 10 points. So if it only increases five points, well, you might wanna consider doing a two-step polish. So we can go from an 80 to an 85 to a 90. Now, sometimes you can get that 10 point increase with one step and you go from 80 to 90, then you're gonna be good to go with your coating. So let's try to keep this at 90. That's a good place to start and where you wanna see your boat before you do any sort of protection. Now, if you guys don't have a gloss meter reading, and I really highly suggest this, especially for boat owners. Boat owners, this will be a tool that you can use every single year to kind of be a teacher for you and really help you stick to a standard each and every year when you're deciding how to detail your boat. Because I know it can get confusing. I know boat owners, they only do this one, once a year and you know they don't have the experience or the knowledge as someone who is a detailer who is doing this week in and week out. So that's gonna be like a teacher for you and it's gonna tell you exactly where to start in that process. Now let's go ahead and cover any readings that you're gonna get below 40, which is what we got on this boat. So what I like to do is if I get between a 10 and a 40, so between a 10 and a 40, 
that is a very good range to suggest light sanding. It means that you do have you know, a little bit of shine in your boat still, but you also have some oxidation starting to build up. That's gonna look like a cloudy surface. When you stand back, kind of look at the bow, look at the hull on an angle, you're gonna see that some parts are shiny, some parts are dull. That's sort of gonna suggest light sanding. So we can start with a thousand Apollon and finish with 2000 Apollon. That's typically gonna be pretty good. Now, when we go from that zero to 10 mark, which is what we got on this boat, that is gonna suggest heavy sanding. So, you know, at least starting at 500 Apollon finishing to 1,000 Apollon and then 2,000 Apollon, or if you're really getting below a five, like a one to a five, you should probably consider 1,000 Apronet. Go ahead, use market Apronet. Then follow that up with 500 Apollon, 1,000 Apollon, and 2,000 Apollon. So it's either gonna be a three-step process or a four-step process once you get under that 10 meter reading. And then guys, if you're getting you know between 10 and 40, that's gonna suggest about a two-step. So again, 1,000 Apollon, 2,000 Apollon, all this is being considered on a DA polisher. So everything I'm talking about here is doing this on a DA polisher, which is going to be the most effective solution for really getting you to that buffing stage where you're getting those really fine, you know, scratch marks that are gonna be easy to take out with buffing and polishing versus doing all this by hand with hand sandpaper. You can do that. I used to do it way back in the day when I first got started, but you're gonna take you know, it's gonna take more time, more work to really get those scratches out and it might take a couple of details to really get your boat back to where it needs from a you know scratch standpoint. But yeah, guys, let's go ahead and talk about the posture that we're using, the pads, and a little bit about exactly how I'm going about this. Today in action, we've got the Griot's Garage G9, which is the DA posture. This is about a, I think $170 DA posture. It is perfect for doing your wet sanding and yeah, I really love this machine. Probably my favorite machine to use for wet sanding because I don't want to use anything too expensive, right? I don't really want to use the Rupes LHR 21 or the 15 just because those are 400 plus dollar machines. And yeah, getting a lot of water on that, I don't want to take the risk of that breaking. So I'm going to use a lesser model. So you can go with the Griots G9, which is what I have, or you can go with the Max Shine DA posture. I think that is just a little or a you know one tier below in terms of pricing. I think that's just above $100, so maybe like $120. Don't quote me on any of this, but yeah, those are about the prices on those machines. So that's going to be your best option for running Apron, Apronet. You definitely have to have a DA polisher. That's how you run these pads, and you're going to want to have an interface pad. So whether you're running a five inch or a six inch uh, pad, you're going to want to have an interface pad that is going to connect from your DA posture. Um, onto your backing plate and then you're going to have your Apron or Apronet on top of that interface pad. That's going to give you that extra cushion to reduce any pig swirls or you know pigtails is what they call it. So when you're you know really going at it with your DA posture if you don't have too much cushion to kind of work around with sometimes you know turning that DA posture at the wrong angle you can really put some extra scratches into the boat that you don't want to see and those can get pretty deep. So this Apron or you know, just this interface pad really helps a lot in protecting your gel coat as you continue to sand the surface. So you know, other than that though guys, pretty much I always stick with the six inch pad. You can go with the five inch, yes, they're a little smaller, but in my opinion, six inch for boats is great. If you do get into an area that you can't actually reach with the posture, all you do is you take that pad off of the DA posture and you get that spot by hand. So you know, I know a lot of people ask about this, how do you get tight corners, how do you get places that simply the buffer or the day posture cannot reach well, you take that sanding pad off and you sand it down with your hand. Here's a quick little clip on what the surface should look like after you have sanded. So it should look like a consistent hazy sort of surface, not super dull, but also not super shiny until you get to the buffing phase. As we jump into the top side, it does get a little bit more, you know, more complicated. Not entirely, but it does get a little harder to kind of use that DA posture for everything. As you guys know, top sides have curves, they have corners, you've got a compartment, you've got all kinds of stuff that you've got to deal with on the top side, which is completely okay. But yeah, back to the hull though, guys, super simple to sand. You're going to go left and right, so vertical, horizontal, and it's going to be just like you are buffing. So you probably saw all that footage. It's super simple, left and right, up and down until you get that oxidation out. Do three or four passes move on to the next surface, move on to the next section. 
and yeah you can get about two to three sections out of every single pad so you know I would say about three foot by three foot two to three sections you can get out with one pad and then that Apollon pad will start to dull down so something to keep in mind and really realize that you will run through quite a bit or quite a lot of pads if you do this correctly I ran through about 60 so you know 60 pads times you know about five dollars per pad that's right around three hundred dollars put into this 37 center console and all I did on this boat was a two-step so I did 1000 Apollon and 2000 Apollon I will just say up front that I wish I would have sanded a little further not every job for me is perfect sanding does get a bit challenging and I never had that opportunity to really do a test spot on this boat so I kind of had to come in blind and kind of stick to what I had on the quote you know unless the client wanted to pay further for um, you know doing extra correction work which did not happen to be the case so we stuck to the plan we did what we needed to I do wish I would have sanded that one step further down so 500 Avalon yes I don't always get these perfectly especially when I don't have assistance from a gloss meter or have the opportunity to really do that test spot to help me know exactly what to do on the boat as we work through this railing system with the sanding the thing about the axle parts it does have quite a high railing so it's about six inches above uh, the gel coat so that gives us the opportunity to kind of really fit our machine in there and get what we need to get where we don't have to actually take that pad off get it by hand so kind of an interesting system here with this boat but it worked really good now you guys might ask hey do I tape anything off do I tape off bright work windows stuff like that I do not when I'm sanding however I'll tape all that off once I get to the buffing I just am very careful about not scratching up a lot of surfaces you know prior to doing that so I'm just gonna be careful I'm gonna stay focused I'm not gonna you know sand down the windows or anything like that because obviously that will create scratches you know bright work being one of those and windows being the other one um, you know and with Avalon you're not really going to risk a whole lot with a thousand and two thousand Avalon even 500 you're not risking a whole lot once you get into the Apronets that's when you really risk damaging and scratching up surfaces so you know if you get down that low and you've got a really bad boat that you've got to jump to the Apronet you you know you might want to consider kind of taping off certain areas of the boat especially windows stuff that scratches really easily um, and then bright work maybe depending on what you're dealing with exactly but railing and stuff you know you don't really have to worry about that um, you know that's going to polish out shine up really good so those are kind of my takes on the sanding part and if I'm going to tape off no I don't I wait until I start buffing one thing that you really want to make sure you're doing is make sure that you're sanding enough on that first round is really key to getting out most of the oxidation in that surface so whatever I'm starting with whether you know it could be 500 Apollon it can be a thousand it can be Abernet we're really focusing on that first round this is going to take you the longest amount of time to do that you know all the steps the first round always going to be the longest that is where you need to take out most of the oxidation on that surface so as I do a section I'm spraying that off with a hose and I'm watching that kind of white chalkiness type of water come off the boat and as that continues to get lower and lower and eventually it'll look pretty much like clear water that means that you've got most of the oxidation if not all the oxidation out of the surface then you can follow up with those following rounds where those are just going to eliminate scratches on the boat so you know the first round is all about oxidation those following steps that you're finishing with is actually reducing these scratches to give you an easy buff and you know make sure that you're getting out enough scratches to really shine that surface up because the more scratches you have in your gel coat the less gloss and clarity you're gonna see in that surface so that's kind of how the sanding process works first round really get that oxidation out the following ones you can go a little faster you know you don't have to spend as much time but really doing that you're getting those scratches out to help you get that clarity that gloss once you finish the whole detail once you get to the top side make sure you're removing all the hardware that is necessary to get you that complete detail that you're looking for so if you've got 30 40 screws running around your boat even five you guys got to take those off that'll make sanding buffing polishing so much easier and it'll really give you that complete feel and detail to your boat if you're trying to buff around all these screws it's going to look horrible you're never going to get everything that you need to get so definitely take out the screws take out the hardware that you can you know put those aside put those in a container really separate it out so you don't get confused um, I've got this kind of organizer plastic container that kind of allows me to organize different parts of the boat where I label them and then it makes it super easy that when I'm done so if you are a boat detailer that when I'm done and I'm ready to put those screws back whether it's been a week or two weeks depending on how long 
I'm working on this boat. I know exactly where those screws go and I can get them back in place. So really important part to keep in mind while you're sanding, something you wanna do. As we wrap up this segment of the video, we're gonna cover a list of things to do and a list of things not to do while you're sanding your boat. So what you do wanna do is you wanna do either a gloss meter reading or a test spot on a boat before you detail the whole boat so that you know exactly what needs to be done on each part of the boat before you get started. So the hard top, gonna get a ton of sun. Do a spot there, do a spot on the hull, do a spot on the top side. More test spots, the better that's gonna be for you so that you can knock this out of the park. So test spots you wanna do, or that gloss meter reading, what I went over earlier here in the video, that's gonna help you set you up to get you those perfect grits for your boat. Now, do not do what I did, right? I did not do either of those. Sometimes I think that I can just come into a boat and I'm gonna be able to know exactly what to do, but the reality is all these gel coats are different. I had never worked on an axle par. This is a super hard gel coat, very hard to sand, very hard to deal with. So that was my mistake. I should not have done that. So that's something that you can learn from. Now, another thing that you do wanna do is you want to run this at the correct speed. So you wanna run this at a four. Do not run this at a one or a two or a six, right? If you run it too slow, then that machine isn't going to cut enough, not gonna get the oxidation out of the surface. If you run it too fast, you're gonna increase the amount of pigtails or scratches that you're leaving in your surface. So run it at four, that's about 400 RPMs. That's gonna be perfect to where you need to be to do this process correctly. You do wanna switch out grits every two to three sections. So do two to three, three by three foot sections and then switch out your pads. That is something you wanna do. So if I'm starting at 500 Apollon, after two to three you know, sections, I'm gonna switch to a new pad, two to three sections, switch to a new pad. And then once I'm finished with you know, going to the surface with that first round, then I'll come back, I'll do the same exact process with the next grid, a thousand, do that same process, come back with 2000, and that's gonna finish it off. So always finish to 2000, that's gonna really keep you where you need to be for your buffing. So I know some people say you can sand to a thousand. I do not think that's okay. I do not think that's the right way to do it. Sand to 2000. That's gonna really make sure that you're set up for buffing. Here's what not to do when you're sanding your boat. Do not ride corners and curves super hard and heavy because those spots will typically become depleted the fastest on the gel coat because they get a lot of wear and tear. Number two, do not sand windows, bright work, plastics. Those do not have oxidation. That will increase scratches and create scratches in those surfaces. So when you're sanding, be careful that you're not sanding into those surfaces by accident. And then finally, the most important one that you guys are gonna be thinking of is do not fear sanding through the gel coat. The reality is, is that if you are sanding a boat that, you know, and you do sand through the gel coat, the odds are that boat already had a thin gel coat before you got started. And typically those are gonna be older boats. And guess what? Those are always fixable. You do a gel coat repair, you hire someone to do it, and that problem is solved. So you do not need to worry. You're never going to sand off all the gel coat on the entire boat. That's just simply not practical. And if you really follow the steps, the procedures that I laid out, you know, if you go with that gloss meter procedure that I laid out earlier in the video, you're gonna be set up perfectly to do this process because I have used that system over and over and over and it works almost every single time. Also, you can always do a test spot to kind of help you see where you need to be at. But yeah, we really just wanna take out the oxidation. Once we get the oxidation out, finish out those scratches, get to the buffing, get to the polishing, you're gonna be all set and good to go. Do not fear sanding because sanding can be the best thing or it can really get you over that um, you know, hurdle that you're looking for to get your boat back to looking new and looking amazing. So if you need to sand, you gotta do it, jump into it, do not be scared, follow the procedure, follow the plan that we laid out in the video. I know you can do it, I am here for you and I believe in you. So go do it guys, follow the procedure. If you are for some reason unsure of where to start in the sanding process, I always say start with 500 Avalon, go to 1000, go to 2000. Every single time, if you do not know what you're doing, follow that process, that is going to work on 80% of boats get to it and I know you can do it. So guys, let's go ahead, let's jump into the next segment of the video. I don't know about you, but I am super excited to get to the buffing process because overall, this is probably my favorite part in all the restoration process because this is where your boat really starts to come back to life it really starts to shine up again. So when you're wet sanding, you're kind of making the boat 
you know, more dull or look worse. And then when you get to the buffing, that boat starts to look a lot better. So, um, you know, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be buffing the hull in this segment. So we've got a DeWalt rotary buffer. Really, you need to choose between DeWalt or Makita. That is the only way to go if you're looking for a high quality detail, something where your boat is going to really get that good shine because you need a durable machine, something you can lay pressure into, something you can, you know, really cut with. And DeWalt and Makita allow you to do both of those things. Now, I like the DeWalt, in my opinion, just because of that faster trigger. When you have a personality like me where I like to keep going and going, I don't even like a half second of delay which is basically what you're getting with that Makita. It's just a slightly slower trigger. I like how I can run that trigger fast, get right into it, and go, go, go. So I like DeWalt, super durable, super high quality. Um, Makita arguably is, you know, in terms of the build, it may be just a tad more durable, but again, that slow trigger for me is just not something that fits my personality. So I like the DeWalt, but other than that, we do have a buff and shine wool pad so you do want to go with a quality wool pad at a good price so we're looking at about 21 22 dollars here you know yes you could go with 3m but you're stepping up another price tier you're getting into 30 35 dollars and really you're not really sacrificing any quality so buff and shine i can pretty much knock out a whole detail a whole restoration with one pad it's not going to lose wool super fast it's going to give you an excellent cut and excellent finish and it's really everything you're looking for in a wool pad which is why i choose this every time now when we're first getting started you need to understand that you know the rpms do get very important and this allows you to change your results with your buffing procedure so if i'm going to run super slow if i'm going to run at 600 which is typically where these machines like to start at that's going to give me a really good cutting time it's going to allow me to really work that compound in fully and it's going to slow that breakdown of the diminishing abrasive because we are using stark level r as you guys probably always notice in these videos, Circle of R being the heavy compound, it's diminishing abrasive. The slower we run this pad, the more work time we can get, the more cut we can get, and the more oxidation we can get out of the boat. So pretty much after any sanding job, I'm gonna try to run that buffer at that lowest speed. I'm gonna work it up as I kind of work that compound in, I'm gonna work it up to a thousand. And you know, really level R, it likes to finish at 1500 typically on most gel coats. So we don't really have to run it up to 18 or 21, even though the bottle does say, you know, you can get it up to 1800. I notice on pretty much any boat that it likes to run best when you top it off at 1500. Really understanding your products is key to this whole process. So it doesn't matter what I'm using. I can be using Shine Supply, 3M, Presta, Stark Level R, like whatever you're using, you need to understand that product so you can use it to the best of its ability to get that final and maximum result that you're looking for. And look, I'm gonna say this, it doesn't matter what step you're working on. If you're wet sanding, I'm gonna tell you this is the most important step of the process. If you are buffing, I'm gonna tell you this is the most important part of the process. Every single step builds upon another, but in all honesty, buffing really is like that go-to. It's, it's really that main part of the entire process because once you do a bad job buffing, that then leads into a ladder effect. So now your polishing is off, now your sealant's off, it's gonna be harder to wipe off, and it just creates that ladder effect down the road, and every single step afterwards is difficult. So really running that compound low at 600 allows us to get that work time that we need to really get that surface that we're looking for. Follow that down into 1,000, into 1,500, and that's why I said, like, I've learned level R, so regardless of what you know the bottle says or the instructions say, I know that it finishes slower, better. It always finishes slower, better. So I'm gonna top at max 1500. Sometimes I'll top at 1200, it just really depends. But that compound does not like to run hot, it just does not finish well. Whereas Elevate, once we talk about that in the polishing process, that one does like to run a little hotter. So really understanding your products is key to maximizing your um, benefits, maximizing your results in these boats. So I think that's super important that, and that'll take you from a good detailer into a great detailer. And that's what allows you to really, you know, build so much reputation for yourself because at that point, nobody can replace you because you have that knowledge, you have that skill set um, that becomes super valuable to the industry. Um, and, you know, it's super hard to replicate something like that. So I think that's super important um, and just something I want to mention, but let's go ahead and continue to talk about the process and some more tips that you need to ensure you're doing this correctly. We did end up taping off this whole rub rail. So on the axle part, you've got a full rubber rub rail uh, from top to bottom. And it's like three inches 
wide and like two inches thick so it's a really big solid rubber rail which is an incredible design for the boat because you know it's going to eliminate a lot of banging up and it's really going to protect your boat from a lot of damage so i think it's a really really cool design however you do want to take that off because when you got full rubber um like that yes when you get that pad into there compound is going to get into those pores so you really got to understand when you're buffing and you're buffing around plastics and rubber those things um when you're buffing with the wool pad those will push that compound right into those surfaces and you cannot scrub those surfaces out you cannot use the greaser you've got to get a pressure washer and kind of hope for the best at that point so it's so much better to actually tape off these surfaces because like i said when you get that wool pad in there they push that product straight into the pores making it super difficult to deal with in the future so tape it off problem solved don't need to worry about it now i have changed up my buffing process a little bit so you know as you guys watch me buff and detail i know you know i've got people telling me like a few people telling me like it does get confusing there's so much information out there um and you know and they're looking for help they're looking for advice and you know every time that i release a video my goal is to share with you the most current and up-to-date tips and tricks that i have learned through my experience so we're coming on, you know, I'm, I've almost been in business for four years, so I'm, you know, I'm getting close to having four years of experience. Every single time I detail boat, I learn more, I pick up new things, and my buffing process now is like, you know, I don't necessarily go left and right, uh, you know, I don't go horizontal and vertical all the time now. When I like to buff, what I like to do is I like to start in one location, I like to work in that spot, and then I add more compound to the picture so for example if i got a two by two foot section of compound on the gel coat i'm going to start in the middle i'm going to work the middle end i'm going to slowly work around the outside bringing more compound in more compound in more compound in until i reach the outers and then that's how i'm going to do the buffing so i'm not necessarily just going left and right up and down i'm working middle to out and i'm flaring out and to me that's been an amazing increase or an amazing change in the way that I buff that's helping me get better results, giving me more, you know, clarity, making it easier for me, you know, as I'm buffing. And yeah, I just think this is helping me so much. So I'm going to share tips. I'm going to share updates as I kind of learn as a detailer. And to me, you know, it really does. It feels like I'm reaching like that next level of a detailer where, you know, where you have four, you know, five, six, seven years under your belt, you can really pick up on things and really do things that will help you make things easier on your body yet still provide incredible results it's almost like that feeling where you've done something so long like your intuition is just like telling you what to do and kind of leading you even though like you never thought to do it this way or that way it's like you're you're, you're just being called to do something a certain way and it just works out great so that's kind of how i'm feeling you know as i'm continuing to grow as a detailer like i'm just just things are coming to me and it's like I've never seen this. I've never like heard of these strategies or these ways to buff, but they're just like coming to me. I'm going with them. I'm following them and they're giving me better results. So just super cool. And I think that does kind of come along with, you know, when you work on something for so long in your life, you know, things, ideas, even stuff that you've never seen before just comes to you and, you know, you're able to implement it and make things better and easier. So we are working around these rails right now. So let's not get too far out, but, um, just kind of still focus on what we're doing but yeah we're working around these rails we're working around uh, this cleat over here um yes yeah, so i do tape off everything so like i said we did the rub rail i tape off all bright work all windows you guys will see that throughout the video that everything is taped off because the thing with bright work is it gets really dirty right bright work likes to attract dirt particles it likes to turn black it likes to get really dirty and when you're running the wool pad unfortunately um you know when you do hit that bright work which is always going to be you know inevitable you're gonna hit the bright work when you're buffing with the wool pad well if you do that and you don't tape off it's going to actually pick up those dirt particles kind of pick up a lot of that dirt that's sticking into um that bright work and it's just going to bring it right onto the gel coat and now your gel coat is turning black and it's a pain to deal with and if you have to do it throughout the entire boat it's going to slow you down so much so super super easy to just tape it all off in advance you know i used to try to get away with it in the past not going to work i tape off literally everything now and you might be wondering well what if i actually polished the bright work you know all the stainless steel and then i decided to buff um still i don't think that's the best way to do it i still think you should do the bright work at the end of the project um because you know you will touch it your hands will get on it you'll get compound and polish on it like it's just easier to wait to do the bright work to the end and we'll kind of cover that 
here later in the video. So tape everything off, it's worth it. Um, it's gonna help you, save you time, gonna give you better results. Not to mention that you will actually put scratches into the gel coat so when you're buffing that wool pad and you're taking some of those dirt particles, you know, off of that bright work, it'll actually create scratches in your gel coat. So you do not wanna do that. There's really just so many things that you could do to your gel coat that just makes it a disadvantage. So tape it off, um, it's pretty much, I mean, nowadays that's pretty much the standard, taping off the bright work, pretty much everyone's gonna do it and it helps you a lot, especially with the wool pad. Now, if you're on a foam pad, you don't have to do it because actually that's not gonna take it off. It's always the wool pad that's gonna do it. So the wool pad, very aggressive, and I tell you what, on bright work, on plastics, on glass, that stuff just likes to push that compound into those pores, whereas foam pads, you don't need to worry about that. Microfiber pads, don't need to worry about that. Only the wool pads. We've covered quite a bit in this segment so far, but let's, yeah, let's do check out this new strategy. So you can see how I'm kind of working the middle I'm not starting on the edge and going vertical and horizontal like, like I would preach in the past and like I would do, but now I start in the middle and I flare out um, to the end. So I, I work in compound, you know, as it works in, I bring a little bit more into the picture, bring a little bit more into the picture as you can see um, as I'm doing now. And yes, I do like to tilt that wool pad. So when I do tilt that wool pad, I'm able to get all that heat and all that pressure into one location which for cutting purposes is amazing so you know it is really important that you do tilt that pad most of the time as you're initially working in that compound so you can get the best cut in a specific area because when you when you really run that pad flat you're evening out the distribution and you know that's going to create a better finish but in terms of cut not so much um really pretty much ineffective so tilt that pad um i don't know what angle i'd be running at maybe you could say like a 45 degree angle is kind of what I've got it at, but um, yeah, we're gonna really work this, um, you know, kind of bring more into the picture until it's all off the boat. Um, and yeah, I just really like the strategy for some reason. So kind of came into me, kind of came to me intuitively and I've been using it ever since. I really like it. So, but as we do finish it off, so as we do really get that compound um, pretty much completely off, off the surface and that's what you wanna do. You wanna buff on that angle until all that compound is actually disappeared and you can't see anything right the surface looks really glossy and then you can run that pad flat like i'm doing here this is going to give you that good finish so once we do the cut get that good finish because it's just going to make the polishing process easier in every step that is going to follow this process so um, that's kind of how you do it we're going to run that corner you've got a little you know gel coat on the bottom that we're going to run that pad into and uh that's going to give us our good finish i know some of you guys are going to be like simon have you used Presta Supercut, have you used 3M Heavy, have you used this product or that product or Shine Supply? And you know, my thing to you is like, you can use whatever product you want, whatever product you're gonna be comfortable with. You know, I really do like Stark Level R because number one, it's a diminishing abrasive. A diminishing abrasive is going to break down and it's going to give us sort of a polished feel and look to the boat. Whereas, okay, yes, if you're using 3M Heavy, you're using Presta Supercut, that'll work too. But just realize that you're gonna to have to actually run through more steps. It's going to take you much longer to work in that surface because those grits do not break down, which means longer buff time. And like I said, you're not getting as glossy of a surface, so you're gonna to have to do two extra steps instead of one step polish. So yeah, I just really don't see any reason to use those hard, heavy cut compounds, especially on a sanding job, because you're doing everything that you need to to get that surface back to where it needs to be. So you're doing the all the wet sanding, you're finishing down to 2000, and like that just creates a perfect scenario for a diminishing abrasive type of compound like Stark Level R. So Level R is really the only one that I'll use um, in this situation. I do understand if you're using 3M or Presto Supercut, you've used it for a while, you wanna continue using it, go ahead and use it. Just understand that I really think you got a lot more time into your project, and I think you know if, you don't, if you're not running a couple extra steps of polish, you're not gonna get that surface and feel and look like you're gonna get with Level R and Elevate tied together. So just keep those things in mind and um, that's my advice to you. So if you haven't tried Stark, I think you should give them a shot. Um, it saved me a lot of time. It makes my detailing look really good. Um, and yeah, they've really kind of created compounds and polishes to make the average detailer or boat owner look really good um, because it's just super easy to use, right? You don't have to be super educated and really understand the process because these products, they just simply work. As we catch the tail end of that segment, I was buffing uh, those compartment kind of hatches. So yes, I do pretty much buff everything on the boat. Like when you're getting a detail through me, I'm buffing everything on the exterior. So yes, we do not go inside the cabin and buff inside of there, 
but everything on the exterior is getting buffed. So little cracks, little crevices, anything that I can see that we don't have to actually open up a compartment. Like we're not gonna buff inside your compartments and stuff like that. Obviously we can always make special requests, but for our normal regular package, that's not what we do, but we do buff everything on the exterior. So I thought that was really cool that I was able to show a clip like that because I know some of you guys sometimes ask me like, what do you do in tight corners? What do you do here and there? Like I buff the whole boat regardless of whether I've got to do it with you know, the DeWalt buffer, whether I've got to do it with a three inch polisher or by hand, I'm getting um, all those parts on the boat. It's insane the amount of information we were able to cover in this buffing segment. So let's go ahead and bring this to a wrap. Let's cover a list of the things that you do want to do and the things that you do not want to do while you're buffing. So what you do want to do is you want to start really slow. So you want to start at the lowest speed, 600 RPMs is going to be great for Stark Level R, which I do recommend that you use if you're not already using it because it's going to help you follow along in this video and give you very similar results, if not the exact same results that I'm getting right now in this video. So we're going to start at 600, we're going to work it in, and then we're going to increase to about a thousand right when we get to the point where pretty much almost all that compound is worked in or very close to it, we can increase to a thousand and then we can finish off at 1200 to 1500 depending on what we're seeing and what we're liking. Um, 1500 is going to be the high end for level R. Typically, it does not like to finish very hot and it's just going to give us, you know, much worse results, right? Because it's going to start to swirl and yeah, I don't really like that about the product. So very heavy swirls, but if we keep it low, we can kind of eliminate some of that. Second, you do want to tilt that pad on the side. So that's going to allow us to pressure point that area into one location to give us the best cut, the best uh, heat and speed in that specific location. That's going to give us the best results. And then we do want to finish flat. So when we're finished, we do want to finish flat. That's going to disperse out the um, sort of pressure all over the pad and give us the best finish. And then the final thing that you do want to do that I would say is you do want to have a, um, a scrub brush or a buffing spur to clean out your pad periodically to eliminate caking on your pad from the compound. So sometimes your pad will build up compound. That is going to eliminate the results that you're getting. It's going to make it much harder. It's going to uh, give you longer buff times. So keep that pad clean is always super important. Here's some things that you do not want to do. Number one, you do not want to run the pad super fast. So if we were to start off at 1800, level R would be working in so fast that we would not be getting the proper cut the proper gloss that we want to get by the time we finish out that compound. So we want to give it time to work. So run it slower and then increase faster. Do not run very fast to start off. That's going to be very bad for the compound and for the results. Also, we do not want to keep that pad in one location. So we want to always keep that wool pad moving. Never keep it in one location because depending on the gel coat, which this is a harder gel coat, you can actually risk actually burning the gel coat. And we do not want to do that because then we gotta wait a few hours, sand it down, redo it. So that just you know takes more time in the detailing process. So always be careful about that. Keep that buffer moving. Don't apply an insane amount of pressure in one location because again, that is going to increase the chances of burning the jacko. So really those are the only two big things that you gotta be careful of. The last thing though is to be very careful is when you're running around different cords. So if you're running around cords, when you're running around bright work, like a windshield wiper, like what we got going on up here, run that buffer super slow and keep it there. So if you're gonna run around bright work, if you're gonna run around cords, uh, windshield wipers, keep it at 600. Do not increase the speed that whole time. So finish that out at 600 because guys, it is not worth increasing that speed because what happens is if that, if that buffer gets caught in the windshield wiper, if it gets caught in a cord, if it gets caught on bright work, that is going to kick back and hit you in the face or it's gonna rip out a cord, it's gonna break something. So that is the final thing that you do not wanna do. Do not increase that speed around tight areas. Always keep it at the lowest setting. Always do that. That is a super pro tip that you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind for that. So guys, I know you can do this. I'm super excited. I know you guys wanna get started. You wanna start buffing your boats. Um, like I said, it's super easy to do. Follow the steps, follow the guidelines here in this video and you're gonna be on your road to success, guys. I know that you can do it. Another one of my favorite parts in the detailing restoration process is actually polishing because this is going to get out all those swirls from the buffing process and it's going to give you that extra shine, that extra clarity that you're looking for before you apply a protection 
to your boat. So this is like the final pass that you're doing to ensure everything looks good before protection. So you really gotta focus in and tune in to this part and make sure that you're doing a really good job in the actual polishing and then the actual wiping off of you know the polish that didn't actually get worked in because polishing is a little different than buffing and we're gonna cover all that in this segment right now. Now, to start off, we gotta talk about machines. So we've got the Flex 3401 BRG, also known as the Beast, the favorite, my favorite machine to use for polishing. Why? Well, because the Flex 3401 is, is super indestructible. Um, this thing, you know, no matter what you do, how much pressure you're giving, this thing works. It is extremely well built. And you've either gotta choose this or you've gotta choose the Rupa's Millie. Rupa's Millie, another great option. However, you know, for me, I just think that it's not as durable, right? You can't kind of give it as much pressure. Uh, I've kind of broken the Rupa's Millie when I used it, and I just think it's better for light, um, light, light polishing, or you know, pretty much for car detailing. So I'm not a huge fan on it for boats. So I will always go with the Flex. I think it's the perfect correction machine, the best correction machine to use for polishing on your boat. So really, you know, what makes this different from uh, buffing is that you really gotta choose between two pads. So when we're buffing, we know that we're gonna go to a white wool pad, but with polishing, we've gotta choose between a gray Lake Country foam pad or a orange uh, Lake Country foam pad. Now the, the gray is gonna be more aggressive, it's gonna be more hard, more durable, which means we can actually take out more scratches um, with that type of pad. So that's why we're using the gray here on the hull because I really wanted to take out more scratches and yeah the uh, orange is going to be good for just lighter polishing and you know pretty much when you when you didn't have to do any sanding the orange is going to be perfect but when you did have to sand it just gives you that extra correction that you need in my opinion which is why i like the gray lake country so much so you got the gray and the orange um if you sanded your boat down pretty easy go with the gray my recommendation if you're just doing normal buffing and then you're going to polish go with the orange that's going to be the perfect solution there so those two pads amazing the best pads in the industry for actually polishing. So, you know, now that we've got all that set up, we've got the applicator. We're doing the same thing that we did with the buffing. I love the applicator because it allows us to control how much polish is going on the boat and exactly where at. Whereas if we're putting it on the pad, number one, the pad's gonna cake up very quick. So this strategy, a lot better for polishing. And yeah, it's just gonna save us having to clean the pad. And we can actually use the pad for quite a long time, you know, at least a third or if not a uh, half of the detail, we can actually use the same pad without having to clean it or switch out for a new one. So that's what I really like about using the applicator method. It just gives us more control and it allows us to control our results. We will be running the flex at between four and five. So it's kind of crazy, but I like 4.5 is where I like to run the machine. But yeah, I would say four to five is gonna be perfect for you. So go ahead and run it at that speed. And I do use the vertical and horizontal strategy that I used to use in the past, uh, I'm buffing, but I don't use it anymore. So I'm not, I'm not working this from center and then working out and fanning out. I'm just doing horizontal, vertical until I get that polish worked in where I want it to be. So the thing that's different with polishing versus compounding is compounding, you've got the wool pad, you're working in that compound and that wool pad allows you to actually take that compound completely off the gel coat. Whereas polishing, you don't have the advantage of doing that. You're just kind of working it in and you wanna work that polish in until it's a super light haze. So, you know, as you start to work it in, uh, the surface is gonna look really cloudy, but as you continue to work that polish in, it's gonna become a lighter haze and a lighter and a lighter and a lighter haze until almost it looks like, you know, a super light haze where that polish is barely on the boat. That's where you know you've worked this in good enough. So I'm not gonna say, hey, do three passes, I'm gonna say do three, do four, do five, do how many passes you need to do to get that polish to that point where it is super fine and it's just a super light haze on the boat where you can wipe it off super easy. So when you're actually using the microfiber to wipe off the polish, if it's very hard to wipe off, you did not work in that polish long enough. If it's pretty easy to wipe off, um, then you did. So yes, it's not gonna wipe off like wax, but it should be just just a tier above that, just a little harder to wipe off than wax. As you can see right here, what I'm doing, look, it looks pretty easy to wipe it off. So that's how you know you've got it to the right point. So three to five passes, I'm gonna leave that call up to you, but that's where you wanna be at when you're polishing. I did wanna jump back really quick and just mention another thing about the Rupa's Millie versus the Flex 341. So I actually do have a video on this. So if you wanna check out a few, go, go a few videos back uh, recently and check out that video. But yeah, the Rupa's Millie really doesn't run this gray pad effectively and really hardly at all. So I feel like when you do run the Rupa's Millie, you kind of eliminate the option of being able to run the gray uh, Lake Country pad. So 
that's where I would kind of say, hey, I don't think the Rupus Milli is the best machine for correction, whereas the Flex can handle this pad very well. So really the Rupus Milli is pretty much only good for the orange Lake Country, but the gray one, it's really hard to run on the Milli. So just some things to keep in mind, you know, like I said, I've got a whole video on the Flex versus the Milli, so you can go ahead and check it out. You'll learn so much more information there, but in this video, we're just gonna cover the polishing um, and more of the, you know, the actual tactics to doing this properly. So again, guys, you can see me doing these directions. I'm going vertical, horizontal. I'm kind of at a decent pace. Like, you know, I'm not really, I'm not too concerned about the pace really. You know, for example, I can go really fast, which obviously I'm not gonna do that. I do not wanna go super fast. Um, but if I were, I would just do more passes versus where I'm going slow. So if I'm going super slow, so that's, that's where you can kind of, kind of uh, take it in for yourself. So if you're gonna go super slow, yeah, three passes is probably gonna be good. If you're going a little faster speed, that's when you're gonna work up to about five passes. So it really comes down to you, your speed, um, and how much you're able to work that polish. And now we are on the hard top, and yeah, this was a hard gel coat to work with. Um, as in like, so you have soft gel coats, you've got hard gel coats, and hard gel coats sometimes, you know, you may find them in sport fishers. Like I know the Egg Harbor was a difficult boat for me to work on. Uh, it seems like the Axle Par has a really hard gel coat. And all that means is that, you know, a little bit of history on this boat. So it is a 2018 Axle Par. Um, from our understanding, it has not been detailed really. It hasn't been washed. It hasn't been um, waxed for five years. So it's just been sitting out for five years in South Florida and it never had any work done to it. And of course, that's gonna uh, allow the gel coat to really go down south very quickly. So pretty much what happened is the gel coat uh, pretty much got a lot of oxidation inside of it. And when you've got a hard gel coat, you've gotta do a lot more sanding to get that out. So a soft gel coat, a lot easier to work with, easy to sand, easy to buff out. Hard gel coats, you've gotta sand a lot more. And yeah, to get those scratches out and all that is just more complicated, more steps, more difficult. So with this project, that's kind of what happened, especially here on the hard top. I would have liked uh, to see it a little better, but again, we weren't able to make that happen. Hopefully next time we can, but we do work with what we've got sometimes and we make it the best we can. So, uh, you know, nothing that, you know, we didn't do, it's not like we did anything wrong. We just could have did a little bit of a better job. So that's a little bit on some of the challenges that we were dealing with as we were working on this axle bar, because uh, guys, not everything's gonna be perfect. Um, even for me, like stuff is hard, stuff is challenging, and you know, we've got to over overcome things every single time we work on a boat. Now, when it comes to cleaning the pad, they actually do make a pretty cool type of system. So they make a spur, a buffing spur for your wool pad, but they also make a little bit of a spur type of pad for your foam pad. And I'll throw one up on the screen from Rupes. It's kind of a cool thing that they've got. So you do want to make sure that you clean your foam pad as well. Not only your wool pad, but your foam pad will kind of cake up and get dirty as well. So always clean that. And like I said, if you do the applicator method, it's going to hold up a lot better. Uh, that that uh, polish is not going to kind of cake on too that foam pad. So that's why I would recommend uh, do that spur, get that stuff off periodically. And then pretty much, yeah, you, if you do that and you take good care of your pad, you can get pretty much about half the boat done before you even need to switch out to a new pad. So I think that's great. Um, you get a lot of versatility with these foam pads. And like I said, the Lake Country is a super high quality brand. Now when you are running the Flex, which is a little bit different than you know running the buffing, is you do wanna keep that pad flat against the surface. So we're not ever gonna tilt this pad Whatever surface we're running on, we're gonna keep that pad flat against the surface um, so we can get the best polish. Because we're trying to polish, right? When we're polishing, we want a nice, clean, and smooth finish. We wanna eliminate swirls from the buffing process. And that's when we run it flat, that allows us to do all of those things. So that's really the key difference between buffing and polishing is, you know, with buffing, we're gonna tilt that pad on an angle. With polishing, we're gonna keep that pad flat. I think it's important to mention what product we are using and I haven't mentioned it yet, but we are using Stark Elevate. So Stark Elevate, gonna be your best option if you want the versatility for um, high heat. So if you got high heat, sunlight, temperature, humidity, like this stuff works really good in the sun. So you can always be sure that Elevate is gonna do the job there. Now Manzerna 400 I know is another popular polish. However, that one does dry out pretty quickly in sunlight. So I kind of tried to sway away from that one, unfortunately, um, unless I'm working indoors. But really, I've been on Stark Elevate for a while now. I also got a video comparing Stark Elevate versus Minzerna 400. If you do want to check that out, that's a while back. But go ahead and check out that video. You're going to get a lot of great information out of it. But I've really um, been a huge fan of Elevate. So that's really up to you on what you want to run. Minzerna 400, if you do want to run that one, it is going to dry out quicker. So I would say do smaller sections. Um, it does have a very good cut, so when you're trying to cut out scratches, Minzerna 400 is really good for that. 
Um, I just like Elevate. I think it's well lubricated. It does take out a lot of scratches, and I, I like the final shine. I think Elevate leaves that final shine a little better than Minzerna 400. Now, if you're using some other type of polish, Presta 3M, you know, again, those polishes, in my opinion, aren't the greatest to work with. Uh, and yeah, I don't really know a whole much about them. So Elevate, Minzerna 400, those are the ones that I would recommend and I would suggest you use if you wanna get similar results um, to what we're doing here in this video today. The only exception to tilting the pad would be when you're working around uh, tight little spaces like this, when you're working around speakers or uh, air vents. Definitely, yes, you can tilt it. The FA polisher, which is what this is, a Flex or a, a Rupes Milli is gonna be a forced action machine. So that uh, orbital or the, you know, the oscillating type of movement is never going to stop. So you can actually turn it on uh, an angle without damaging the machine. But other than that though, guys, you know, when you're running flat surfaces, obviously you wanna keep that machine flat to give you the best polish. So that's kind of uh, gonna be a little bit of a wrap to the polishing process. I do feel like we did cover quite a bit. So let's go ahead again and let's run through a list of things to do and things not to do while you're polishing. Things you want to do while you're polishing. Number one is you want to run the machine between four and five. So if you run it too slow, that actually doesn't allow the polish to work in and it doesn't break down those grids. So just like compound polishes do have grids as well. Stark Elevate starts at 1200. And if you run the polisher too slow, it will not give um, that polish the ability to break down and really finish out to where you need to be at to give that really good gloss and shine. That's gonna set you up great for applying a protection. So really important that you run your machine between four and five. Um, six is gonna be a little too fast. It's gonna work in too fast. Again, that's the issue. So four and five is that range. Another thing that you do wanna do while you're polishing is you want to keep that pad flat when you can. That's gonna eliminate swirls. So when we're buffing, yes, we could end with Stark Level R, but here's a problem. If we ended on that, we'd see a lot of swirls in the gel coat. The surface may look decent in terms of a shine standpoint, but the swirls is the big issue. Nobody wants to see swirls in their gel coat. So it's really important that we keep that pad flat, run the way it's supposed to with the polish and get those swirls out of our surface. Also, we're able to increase the gloss meter rating about five to 10 points. Um, the last thing that you do wanna do is you wanna make sure that you're cleaning that pad. So if you don't clean your foam pad with that Rupes or whatever type of device you wanna clean your foam pad with, well, it's gonna cake up, it's gonna eliminate your results, you're gonna get more of a hazy look by the time you wipe it off. So it's really important to have a clean pad always when you're polishing because this is that final step before you apply protection. So super important, again, every single step of the process builds upon another, every single step is the most important as you're doing it. So the thing with detailing is you gotta stay focused, you gotta stay in the moment, and you gotta take it one section at a time. That is how you detail to perfection. That's how you get and become a very good detailer. Here's what you don't want to do. With a posture like this, you do not want to run this machine in circles. So it's very important to run horizontal and vertical sort of rotations and sort of a plan and a strategy or a path when you're running the posture, do not run this thing in circles. That's not gonna leave you a good finish. Horizontal vertical is gonna give you that best finish. It's also gonna allow you to take out the most amount of scratches because you're getting both directions. So again, do not run this machine in circles. Horrible idea, vertical and horizontal like I've been doing throughout this whole process is where you wanna be at. And yeah guys, that's about it for what not to do. The thing with the posture is every time you increase you know, another step in the process, it becomes more safe. So you really can't burn gel coat with a foam pad. You can't really do a whole lot of damage to anything. So this is a fairly safe process overall. I feel like a lot of people are willing to jump into polishing um, and they're really not scared to. Really what people are concerned about is the wet sanding, they get scared to do that. And then the buffing, they might have some concerns about running a wool pad, right? They might be scared to burn the gel coat, but all these things, you know, if you follow the procedures, the plans that we have laid out in the video, it's very hard to do any of that stuff. And the only thing that is going to help you overcome all of this is by actually getting that experience and actually going out there and doing it yourself. So I know you guys can do this whole process. I believe in you. You guys have been watching my channel for a while. I know it. So it's time, guys, that you go out there, you follow this video. This is supposed to be the most up-to-date information, the best information and advice that I can get to you today so you guys can go do this tomorrow. You guys can get started. You can watch this video. You can get started on your boat and have the results that you're looking for. Um, and have those results that you need to get your boat back to looking new because that is what we want, right? All of us want to have a new boat, a new feel. We don't like driving a chalky boat around that just doesn't have an aesthetic feel. 
um, that we all desire and want. Plus, if we keep our boat maintained, looking great, we have more resale value in the future. Uh, it saves us a lot of money in the end, right? We can protect all our services, keep them up to date. And yeah, you got a great looking boat, your friends, your family, everyone's gonna be raving about it. And that is where you wanna be. So guys, I know you've been watching my channel for a while, so I don't know what you're waiting for. Get to it today. I've aligned a perfect outline. And you know, this is the type of uh, content that I would typically charge for. So I'm giving all of this to you guys for free. It's super easy, super simple to follow, very detailed today. And guys, you always know if you got questions, drop them in the comments. You guys can always reach out to my email, topdocpro at gmail.com, as some of you guys do. And I'm always willing to help. So there's nothing that, you know, really you can't do. There's nothing that needs to hold you back because you've got all the resources right here in front of you. So go take action. Go do it, guys. I'm excited. I'm rooting for you. And uh, yeah, this video has been super long. So I think what we're going to do is we're actually going to break this video into a part one and a part two. So this will be part one. This will cover the sanding, right? We cover the buffing, the polishing. The next video is going to cover the protection on everything. So the protection, the bright work, the vinyl, the plastics, everything that you need to do to finish out that final restore on your boat. So guys, you are going to want to stay tuned for the following week because next Sunday at 9 a.m., the next video is going to be out. You're not going to want to miss it because... Yeah, I know this is perfect timing because you guys up north, right? You're getting ready to get your boats back in shape to launch for the spring. So if you're in Ohio, if you're in Michigan, you're up off the Great Lakes, you're in Canada, wherever you may be, you're in California, you guys are getting ready and I couldn't have released a better video for you guys. So guys, take action with this. Don't just watch this information and do nothing with it. That is not going to be helpful. So I gave you an hour of my time. I asked you guys to use it properly and use it to your advantage. So with that said guys, I will see you on the part two video. Um, and yeah, I'm super excited guys. If you did like the video, you got some value out of it, leave a like. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. What are you doing? Hit that subscribe button right now. And I wanna hear your comments. I wanna hear any questions you guys have. And I will see you on part two next week, Sunday at 9 a.m. Peace out.